obviously you have done an incredible job putting on this event, but also keeping all of us fans up to date on the daily and putting on events around concerts around the world, which is massive. So to start off with, what originally got you into Coldplay and what's keeping you? Um, I think the Coldplay link comes from family, actually. My parents were always playing it in the car, and then that was the inspiration. I got really interested in it. And the first show I ever went to was the one where they filmed the music video for Fix You. Um, so that was a special thing. And as soon as the fireworks went off in that moment, I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know music could make me feel that way. And, you know, similar to this, the fireworks adding that effect, you know, you always need to do that. So. And in, in, in some ways, it's a nice look around. But yeah, and then I think most of you kind of followed our journey for the last 10 years, um, updating fans on news. In 2021, we started to make our original content, with whether it would be you know, live streams um, and things like this, just the place to talk with Coldplay fans online. Um, in 2022, we got an amazing opportunity to interview Chris and Johnny, which I'm sure a lot of you have watched. Um, and then in 2023, we got to make this film as well. So, um, and also we started the meet up events as well. So this is kind of like a nice mix of, um, you know, all of those things. How did the idea of the film come about? Yes, so um, uh, the after the Chris and Johnny interview, we went really well. I think the team, their team was happy with it. The fans were happy with it. It has now 4 million traceable views online. Uh, so it did very well in terms of like, you know, coverage and, you know, and, and, and even in the interview, Chris and Johnny are like, oh, I'm so happy to ask you these questions. You know? So um, it, was, it was kind of a thing like that. So I was like, okay, well, we don't really want to stop there. What's the next best thing we can do knowing you can't interview Chris and Johnny every time, <laughs> every three months? That's just not feasible. Um, and it's supposed to be a special treat, and it was a special treat. So we thought, I think, you have some as a team, we brought some of the ideas, and this is what we arrived at, showcasing the crew, and then all the amazing things that they did to, on the shows that we all love and enjoy. And how did he get involved with this stuff? Well, um, I um, started my own business, my own filming business, in uh, the last of uh, April last year. And uh, I put this message out, like, I'm starting my own business. And then within a week, I got a message from Ian on Instagram. And he asked me, like, hey, congratulations. Um, would you be interested in filming with a couple of famous people? <laughs> <laughs> and if Ian of Coldplay Extra asks you that, then you, of course your answer is going to be yes. So I, 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 didn't, uh, I didn't have to think about it uh, that long. And, um, well... Then he sent me like the concept, and I loved it. And we had a, we had an hour long call about it, like uh, I, uh, like exchanging ideas and and things we could do. And um, yeah, then we just flew to Manchester, and this happened. <laughs> Jesper was one of the persons I trusted with this because he's such a fan as well. You know, I can I knew I could speak to him. I knew he'd match my energy on the kind of voluntary basis of this. You know, I don't call that it's not a business. It's it's just a voluntary thing that I do to you know entertain myself. Some people play tennis. Some people go you know <laughs> whatever your hobby is. Mine is running that thing. So um, I knew Jester would match my energy in that because I couldn't pay him for all the hours that he actually <laughs> put into making this film. Whether it be filming or editing. So I'm um, very grateful, Jester, um, that he did that. <laughs> I mean, you got to live, I would say, almost every fan's dream, going backstage, talking to people and seeing everything kind of laid out for you. Can you um, just walk us through what, what's that day like for you? What, you know, yeah, what, what did you experience? Yes. Um, so when we first got, well, to, just to backtrack on the last point of just being perfect and matching the energy, uh, he actually turned up at the airport one day early. <laughs> <laughs> so he was very keen. <laughs> and then the day itself was honestly a dream. It was one of the best days I've ever had in my life. Like, you know, my baby's top. But then, <laughs> this is very high. And we had an incredible day. We got to see everything. You know, it was access all areas, you know, in, in that sense. And that was just incredible. Apart from, like, the band's changing rooms and this kind of thing. And the, the, we didn't get access to that. But, like, everything. 
anything else we could see and, and, and talk to people just on the fly. Like Yako, um, it was just on the fly, it wasn't planned, and they give us such a nice, honest interview, which I think goes quite well. But the day itself was, was, was wonderful, we was busy, um, trying to track down roadies sometimes. Shaheen, we got literally like five minutes before the show started. We were trying to find him for an hour, um, so that was good fun. And then, yeah, we were busy the whole time up until, uh, if you know, set list my universe. And that's when we got to go back out and onto the show. And um, after everything, we put everything down, we come back out, because uh, was my universe, and then the Skyfall stars comes up, isn't it? And I was just overwhelmed with everything that had happened. I was bursting, crying, like just in happiness. And Jessica put his arm around me, he's like, it's okay, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was one of the best days ever. Are you as well, Jasper? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that surprised you reading about the work that the movies do? The thing that surprised me the most, and I shouldn't have been surprised, is everyone we spoke to, whether it be on camera or off camera, is so on it. They're the, they really are the best of the best of what they do. Um, and and that, that's really evident when you're in the room with them and speaking with them, um, casually or on, off camera or on camera. On camera is a little bit difficult because you know, they don't know me. Well, they might know me, but I don't know. But they don't know Jess, but we're coming in with a camera and we're like, hey. <laughs> you know, and doing that with anyone, these guys aren't actors, they're not performers, they're not, you know, they're normal people like me and you. But I think they look brilliant on the film. Like, they're beautiful people in the film. But like, just that kind of thing where, you know, um, talking off camera, you, you, you actually understood that, oh, these are fans, they really care, they really understand what we're trying to do here, so. Um, that was so, some of the best chats we had were, were off camera and after, after they realised we weren't, you know, trying to stitch them up or it wasn't just like a, you know, a news report or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so do you have a particular highlight from the day? Well, um, you know, I am a, a someone who's very busy with cameras, so I really love chatting to Anna Lee and, and hearing how she goes about, like, capturing the show every night and one of the things that surprised me the most is how she like tries to keep um, every show different in terms of the voters she makes because you're uh, I think it's it's easy to fall into this certain pattern like if Sky for Star is played I want to be high up um, if people of the pride is played I want to be there and and so on um, and what really inspired me was like yeah the show is like 90% the same every night. Um, but how do you go about like changing it up and making sure that every venue you get a fresh set of photos where you're going like, wow, I've never seen that before. And that really like inspired me to, uh, yeah, to make more of, of this. Perfect. Um, we obviously saw the film was filmed last year in May. How long did you, like, in total work on this film? Way too long. <laughs> <laughs> um, the easy part is keeping the secret because there was only really me and Jesper and maybe a couple of people who really knew that it happened. So that was easy, but um, so many hours went into this, you know, we have busy lives. Uh, as I say, it's a voluntary thing, this thing that I do uh, for Cold Extra. And, you know, I have very lovely family life I need to give time and energy for. I have a very busy job as well. Jesper has his own job that he's doing and he, like I say, he matches his voluntary. So, you know, we're very busy anyway. So finding the time was one of the hard things. Um, and I think we got to a point around maybe September where Jesper sent me a bit of a version of something. And I was like, I, I can see it now. I can see the end, and I booked a few days off work to go to Jesper's house and sit with him and just be like, okay, we need to do this, 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 and this, and then after that we were like, okay, this is quite good. <laughs> and uh, once we got to that point, it was like, we should put this in the cinema, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's how we ended up here, I think. I know, yes, but you have an actual number of how many hours you worked on it, so. Yeah, because, uh, Part of being like your own boss is that you have to track your own hours. <laughs> so uh, everything I did for this film was like locked in my uh, 
yeah, in my business. Uh, and my dad actually looked it up because he's like chief finance officer, chief finance <laughs> officer of my business. <laughs> because he works at a bank. But, uh, uh, but in the end, it was 99 hours of editing and then, of course, going to Manchester and having a few meetings with, with, uh, with Ian, just chatting a lot. So I, I think we're in the plus 100 hours. Um, yeah, of, of totally making this 99 film. on editing. 99 on editing, yeah. And obviously the film has made it to the cinema. How do you feel the film turned out in comparison to your original vision for it? Amazing, but <laughs> that's because we didn't really know what we had um, on the day because it was like maybe we'll do um, just spot interviews and then just put one interview up and then the next one and the next one and just upload them as one clips. But actually spending the day there and experiencing it all as one thing felt like the right thing to do to put it together, stitch it together and try and relive that experience that we lived and share it with everybody. Um, so the kind of, okay, it's going to be a film now, it's going to be a documentary kind of film. Um, that's, that, that was a big change for me. And it's, it's such a lovely film, and I really enjoyed it. And I think it paints the picture really, really well of all the little things that have to happen all the day. Um, what do you hope the audience will take away? I think some of you were in the film, so it felt sad. I hope you just, you know, I think a lot of people go to the shows and they just turn up and they're there to see Chris and Johnny and Guy and Will and maybe Phil after, whatever. But, uh, you know, you, I understand that's the main thing, that's what you're going for, but there's like a hundred plus people working back there, all doing little things that make it is what it is. If your favorite part of the show is when the fireworks go off uh, in Skyfall Stars, that's not Chris Martin doing that, you know? So there's a whole, it probably takes 20 people to set that up every night. You know, so really appreciating all the efforts that go into that. Because um, I know I've been guilty in going to a lot of shows and just being like, yeah, I'm only here for the band. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we already heard from you, yes, that you obviously loved your interaction with Emily, but Ian, what, what was your highlight from the film? Um, I, I, I love the ending. <laughs> and that's a really strange thing. I love the end. <laughs> I love when it finishes. But uh, I think we, uh, we go, f we introduce everybody and what their jobs are and how they impact the show, and then the kind of you know getting to know them on a personal level, whether that be what they do on the days up, what's their favorite part about the show, and then this kind of the, the dumb shit on the bus was kind of <laughs> the thing I learned talking to some roadies on uh, Head Full of Dreams tour, and so I knew that I'd be able to get a few clips from that, so and I thought it's a fun way to finish the dog. Before I hand over the mic to whoever has questions, what's next for you? Uh, well, we, <laughs> um, we're busy organizing the family of events. There's some, a lot of good things happening there um, for summer in Europe, so you'll all be informed soon. And, uh, you know, I got. I don't think we'll ever make anything as big as this in terms of films and putting it in the cinema, so this is it, so enjoy it now. Um, but, uh, we, you know, I have an interesting neighbor, um, and maybe we can make something happen there. Please raise your hands if you have questions that you think you have. Yes. I'm going to be a roving reporter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Introduce yourself. What's your name? I stand up. Or... <laughs> okay. Hello, my name is Zach. Um, based on my accent, you can probably tell I'm not from here. I came from Florida. Hey. Um, saw this opportunity to come to this interview, uh, talk documentary, and so I had to rush out of Paris last minute to be here. Thank you. But um, I guess one of the things I wonder about as a content creator is what. How many hours did you spend, spend sitting down just coming up with the questions you were going to ask them and how did you come up with the questions? Yeah, so we prepared 
for every event you know, we thought about all the different aspects of the show that we could be involved or could, obviously we could be talking to because we didn't know ahead of time so we made a bunch of questions like based on okay if we're talking about lights if we're talking about sound which we actually didn't get to talk to on the day or fireworks or wristbands like we just set out questions like that sustainability is obviously a big one for the store so um, yeah we just kind of like mapped questions to areas in case we touched those ones the ones I wasn't really prepared for was I guess Chris Kenzie and he was the first guy we talked to because he's like it's like hey yo uh, what does the production manager do it's like everything <laughs> <laughs> like right how can I get some good questions to Chris so, so. thank you Any other questions? Well, I'm down here. Do Coldplay know about the Yes, Coldplay know about the film in terms of their management team, and they have to sign off on this. Because okay. obviously they give us the backstage pass, and there might be sensitive stuff we captured on camera, which we didn't, because they never said, take this out. <laughs> <laughs> so the, they saw it, they approved it, and they said, yeah. They showed them. That's really good. The one thing that did tell us take out actually was when Ariel was talking, which is the sustainability rep, we actually had the sustainability music, which is not actually Coldplay's, it's John Hopkins. They said, we're going to have to swap that out. And I was like, what song can I put in here now? Color sure it went well. <laughs> yeah, but we talk about sustainability. Um, integrity, have you ever stolen a wristband yourself? And taken it off? <laughs> Take a wristband. Yeah. <laughs> This is my best friend Ryan. He's coming. Uh, he's coming soon. <laughs> All right. If there are no more questions, please. Oh, there's one more. There we go. Um, not so much a question but just a huge thank you from all of the fans for everything that you and everyone at Coldplay Extra do for the fans, the information, the opportunities that are given. Um, and I just thought, you know, in all of this, the film and everything else that's gone before and everything else that's coming in the future, just a huge thank you from all of us. <laughs> We work hard at Coldplay Extra. That's an obligatory thing to keep everyone updated and come up with cool ideas like this. So it, I think actually Vinny, who sat over there in the blue shirt, just to call him out, uh, he's on my team. When he watched this, he said, This is like the perfect encapsulation of our name in the sense we are providing extra content of Coldplay Extra. So, yeah. Thank you, Vinny. Perfect. And now, oh. More questions. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so we used to say earlier, but can you remind us where our friends you are here today can see the film later? Sorry? Um, where can other people who aren't here today see the film later? Ah, yes, Lil. <laughs> Great question. So on Tuesday night, 7pm uh, UK time on Cold Extra TV, uh, YouTube channel. Thank you. Or if you fancy travelling to New York, <laughs> <laughs> you can, uh, go for it. Alright, drinks? Yeah, that's yeah. good to somehow there. Alright, thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. 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 Yeah.